Today we're in the closet with Mike Eastwood. Hello. From Tuesday night dinners. What Tuesday at Mike's? Year nineteen. Got our nineteenth birthday next week. Week after next. Nineteenth birthday. Wow, incredible. So every Tuesday night, Mike, or one of Mike's friends, holds a dinner party. So this has been happening for nineteen years. So later this year, we'd celebrate the thousandth dinner party on a Tuesday night. That's incredible. It's ridiculous. When you th when you think about that, when you started it, could you ever? Uh, uh, what, what, it was what an accident. You... Right. It, it's the most successful thing I haven't tried to do. <laughs> so, my neighbours used to come around for dinner every week, and one uh, one week I said, "Oh, let's have dinner on Wednesday." And it's like, no, no, it's Tuesday. It's always Tuesday. And so I. So, okay, Tuesday, I don't know what day it is normally. So, we realised about that time I cooked the Easter bunny. And we still got Easter eggs that year, so it disproved the theory. But we used that date to backdate to figure out when the birthday was, because we knew we'd done that particular dinner on a Tuesday, early Easter. Right. And then over time, the um, I keep forgetting, because it's just Tuesday every week. So, we picked... The birthday to Angie's birthday oh, because yeah. Angie always tells everyone when her birthday is. <laughs> so it was really easy to remember that it's in March. Angie always chooses Mexican as the theme, and then yeah, that's just that. Yeah. So. But it hasn't just been in Wellington; like you had them internationally as well. Yeah. So when I was away, when it was always at my house, it's free range now, so it goes all over the place. I'd just give people the keys and I'd go away. Um, and then. Oh, right, and people would just come into your house and cook. Yeah. Um, and then when I'm overseas, it's like, well, I'm in Cyprus, let's have a dinner. And so we'd have dinners in London or Spain or Bali or, yeah, all around the world. So. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Lots of good stories, but we could take all the entire video with the stories about Tuesday, so. Didn't you do a little video about, it was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a birthday video, um, which I'd have to find on, be on YouTube still. But, yeah, incredible. Yeah. And so one of the reasons, aside from Mike's famous Tuesday Night Mike, was to talk to you about, we were at a breakfast meeting and talking about the polyester um, contamination of the world's uh, waterway, the drinking water and the ocean water and water in general, and Mike said to me, hmm, I don't know if I own any polyester garments, which is quite incredible in this day and age, so I really wanted to look inside Mike's wardrobe. Here we are. <laughs> so, to qualify, that really set me thinking, so I came through and I'd, I'd rummaged through labels, and I could find uh, a raincoat there which has got some plastic in it, and... Uh, I think that's the only piece in there. But well, today you're in beautiful, beautiful cashmere. And I found that some of my trousers, so this is um, working style Fort Norcom, mm -hmm. has some elastine in there. So going down that rabbit hole, it's still a synthesized elastomer, like it's a rubberized product. Yeah. So to to be clear, there are there is some plastic in my clothing. But it's one that I'm comfortable wearing. So my my arrival at that point, I don't like plastic on my body. Um, from a young age, I found that if I had excuse me, if I had plastic sports socks, uh, my feet would get sweaty and they'd smell. If I had plastic shoes, my feet would get sweaty and they smell. And my body, and so it didn't take long before now. I just if you see me in a fabric store, I'm just hands on. I need to touch and I need to feel it and that's really important I mean the the feeling of this which is a present from Melissa mm. it's just it's like having a hug it's just oh it's beautiful so warm to wear and yeah. now it's winter I can pull out my winter wardrobe which is exciting <laughs> yeah that whole change of season like I don't know if you can see outside yeah. but mm. it's quite a miserable day out there wild and yeah, yeah and it's like we've just suddenly flipped yeah. yeah, and it's really exciting that change of season when you've been wearing your summer clothes and then you get to put your woolens on and be outside. 
yeah, coats, scarves, gloves, all those important things. Yeah, so show me, you've got a couple of pieces here, but some of your favourite pieces? Um, so I started rifling through, and the, the first thing I found was um, my favourite um, designer is Corneliani. Apologies for the pronunciation. And this jacket here, um, I'm in Paris up by the Sacre Coeur. I oh, forget yeah. the region. And I'm just wandering Montmartre. through Montmartre. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wandering through the store, and this jacket has a, a zip insert, so it does the full neck. I, I'll show you some of those in a second. And I'm just like, oh, this is amazing. No price tag. So I asked the guy, and he was like, oh, 250 euros. And so it's a bargain. I want it. Went further through, uh, next assistant, it's like, oh, there's no price on this. And she smiled and said 100 euros. And it's like, wow, oh, it's getting better. <laughs> so I did my best French flirting when I got to the counter <laughs> upstairs and got it for 50 euros. Oh, my God, really? Um, brand and it's got new. little leather detailing. Yeah, it's um, unstructured, so beautiful detailing in the, in the fabric. And originally I thought with... Um, but without the lining. Card in the pocket. Oh, hopefully the business card's a bit. Um, uh, oh, inside hang on, pocket. that's a false pocket. Uh, it's probably still stitched, so multiple pockets. But the craftsmanship doing an unlined jacket is much higher standard than a lined jacket. Because the lining holds all sorts yeah. of sins. Yeah, it hides all sorts of sins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this particular company also does a lot of research into technology. Oh, they have, is, sorry, they have some incredible stuff. Um, beautifully lined. So that sent me on a hunt. Now I know my size. I've actually been buying online. So this one, this is a summer jacket. And you can see there the way the, the front zips up. So autumn. It just so it, it, this would over. be a really good... In, in Wellington's climate, that whole... Yeah. And when you overdress and are running to a meeting and you're overheating, you just zip the lining out, shove it in your bag, and it's you instantly drop the temperature. So it all just... Ah. Wow. I wondered if this was... It's got a slight... I don't know if you can see the shank, but it's got a slightly slubby look to it, like a, like a silk. But it's actually, when we looked at the construction, it's cotton and flax. Yeah. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's such a pleasure to wear. And that's, oh yeah, same deconstructed. Yeah. So then you have to do, if you're going to do that, yeah, the, we call them French seams, but the French probably don't call them that. Where you... Um, or seam. Yeah. <laughs> where, you, where you enclose the seam. So it's, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that, oh, and it's got that almost country detail yeah, there. Yeah, which as far as I go down the country direction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but these red, there's two things in your pants that really stood out. When I look at your palette, it's fairly neutral. And then you've got, see, this speaks, to me, this speaks Italy to me. Yep, yeah. and that's World. Yep. Made in New Zealand. Uh, that's Prada, so it's mohair, like super strong lines. Um, the reason there's not much colour there is it's really hard for a guy to buy colour in Wellington. Yeah. Really hard. Um, so when I see it, it's just grab it. Um, so is this an eBay buy, or did you uh, buy that? Yes, that was that was bought online. Um, pretty much they were brand new. I forget the price; it was ridiculous. Um, and I got at the same time I got exactly the same cut in a, in a chocolate. So the same mohair, mm -hmm. um, really that beautiful Italian line, really um, wide leg, sort of a boot leg, 
It's got an unusual hand feel though. Yeah, I think it's the goat, I assume. Just, it's, it's a little bit scratchy. Yeah. But uh, they look so good, it's not. Yeah. And they're probably lined anyway, so you wouldn't really. Yeah, I think they're lined to the knee. Yeah. Oh no, they're not. Not one? Is that one? So you don't you know don't notice that when you're wearing them? Uh they're quite a light fabric, so it's not doesn't feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Um they're quite um like the cut of them you have to stand well, otherwise you it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, but Italians are really into the silhouette. Yeah. It really, it really does matter. And some clothes, you know, some clothes you wear, and they're not for slouching, and you know, that, and that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. What the um, getting dressed up to go out, um, which I hadn't done today because I'd come to my home. But um, it, it, there's a ceremony there. There's a process. There's decision. There's attention to detail, um, which we sadly lack country. I interviewed Laurie Foon from Starfish a few weeks ago and what I loved um, about her, I mean I love lots of things about her, but she said on a Sunday evening quite often she'll go into her room with a glass of wine and open her wardrobe and look at it and think about or plan what she's going to wear during the week and I thought oh my god that's such a nice ritual rather than standing in the shower going oh my god what am I going to wear? See, I think Wellington's weathered, it paints more on what am I going to wear today rather than in two days' time because we couldn't predict the weather we've got today. No, you need plan A, plan B. Um, so we need to have our, let's wear our favourite starfish clothing party. That's the last piece I've got left, Laurie. Um, it's Ooh. cut on the bias, a little bit see-through. And um, it, Yeah, I'm just looking at that little... Um, See-through, yeah. those little see-through, um, and I can't think of the name of the term for it, but um, cutaways. Every other piece of clothing that I bought from Starfish, I wore to pieces, and they went to the compost. Nice. I've I got think. one piece left from her as well, and yeah. I love it. She was such a huge influence on New Zealand fashion. Super long cuffs, like they're down like, really long on me. Yeah. Um, which Do I you thought. like that? Don't you? Uh, well, it's a special occasion. It's not like you're going to be cooking in them or yeah. you're going to be drinking the martini or making the martini. I love them in Wellington because they keep your hands nice and warm. It's like you don't need to yeah. wear gloves. I, I enjoy the gloves side of things. And in here, I spotted some beautiful Donegal tweed. So it's a double tweed, it's super thick, um, and it, it's just it's incredible to wear, um, it's quite heavy, uh, that's lined to the knee. Um, and you want that with wool pants? Yeah. And with, with Donegal, um, they have this, um, that it's, it's not a single colour, it's a blended colour, so they blend the wools together and then you get this variance, this natural variance in the wool, but absolutely beautiful. So did you buy them over there or did you, how did this you come was, across them? This is an eBay purchase and there's a, a seller in the States that sells high-end clothing and sometimes you find the right piece at the right size for the right price and I forget what they were but under fifty dollars. Wow. Um, they were brand new so I had to take them up. Um, my mum taught me well so I did that myself. Um, Check out your stitching. And oh they, they've got a decent um, hem on them. Yeah well I wanted the weight. I didn't want this. I would have cuffed them if I knew how but yeah. Oh your mum did teach you well. <laughs> Yeah, I should pull out the sewing kit that she made me. Good work, Mrs. Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, beautifully stitched. So, yeah, that, as a young boy and family story, I'd go out shopping with mum and dad and they're like, oh, you know, pick some clothes. It's like, look at this. I'm not having this, it's too expensive. It's like, oh, but feel the fabric. No, it's too expensive. Uh, yeah. And then I started working. 
and so I could go out and buy beautiful clothes. And I've always looked above my income, whether it's champagne or clothes or whatever. Um, whereas now I'm buying some of these design labels from overseas at a ridiculous price. And is it is that sort of off season or end of line or it could be a rich person's dumping their wardrobe. Um, it could be um, like I bought a, a silk wool, a uh, silk cotton suit, seventy percent silk that um, they they didn't have any buttons on it, and it was just sewn, so it was perfect for adjusting the suit mm. completely, and it was under. Uh, would have been under 200 there's a magic threshold where if you import clothes into new zealand um 220 dollars they start charging you gst handling fee and all that sort of stuff so little plug for new zealand post if you drop ship to their warehouse in portland um, you can combine the packages and then ship them here ah. and you keep that price range right you can get multiple pieces in so Thanks, New Zealand Post. And it's a great service. Um, there's a great example of a recent tie I bought. Uh, I'm trying to be more decorative. That's this year's, despite what I'm wearing now. Um, so Ten dollar brand new silk tie. Um, and so you can just sneak that into a package, or sneak it in. They repack it and add it in. So if you're bringing a jacket in, then adding this in is insignificant. Yeah, in terms of weight and yeah, 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 yeah. beautiful. Um, so, so the actual fabrics themselves, as well as the cut and the design, but the fabrics themselves are really, really important to you. Yeah, I think it's that um, that expression. So I trained as a product designer, and did industrial design, and so for me, it's wearing design. It's wearing and it's not fashion, it's style. And I've always been great comment. Completely fashion will come and go. There are things in here that are definitely unfashionable, but the, the style is beautiful. And so it doesn't matter if I wear them now or in ten years time, they're they're just well made, well designed, beautiful to wear. And that that sort of gives you an advantage again if you're buying stuff. Like uh, men's shoes, they don't buy um, in New Zealand. Yeah, they sell, shoes. they sell black or brown shoes. Um, and if there's anything unusual, the price goes down because Kiwi men don't buy interesting shoes. And I'm happy with that generalisation. Get over it. <laughs> the um, so the advantage for me is that I get these amazing shoes that have been discounted, and I can buy a higher price design for a better price. Yeah. Um, and I think I mentioned before I haven't thrown away a pair of shoes in like somewhere five, six, seven years because all the shoes I buy now are beautifully made. Um, so there are the ones you were commenting on the other day. Um, so Oliver Sweeney, favourite London designer, made in Italy. These have had, it's probably five years old. They've been resold by um, Evan in Gasling Street, who is a complete craftsman. Really, he, he does an amazing job. So yeah, you have to, when you take your shoes in there, you do have to wait a while. Like it's not a quick turnaround, but, but it's absolutely worth it. Again, most Kiwi men only have two pairs of shoes, so they're not going to wait. Um, whereas I've got a lot, uh, plenty to choose from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so again, I'm able. Those are new ones that I've just bought. Oh, interesting. So it looks like the Tapapa thumbprint. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> But they'll, I'll get three resoles out of those. Yeah. And bought new online. Um, again, it'll be under that threshold, but I know their size so well, it's safe for me to buy online. Mm. Other brands, not so much. Well, you uh, talking to the cameraman behind the camera. You have trouble finding shoes in New Zealand. You often buy them elsewhere just because mm -hmm. of the lack of. Choice. There's only two shoe shops in Wellington for guys. There's um, the old guys next to Midland Park, and I'm saying old guys with the utmost respect. Uh, beautiful Italian shoes. Um, they'll, they'll like these. They'll last forever. 
um, and Atticus at the bottom of Plymouth Steps. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. They have some really out there shoes. Yeah, um, but he goes to Europe, selects the shoes and brings them back. And again, lucky for me because they sell out of all the black and brown yeah. and I'm left with the interesting ones to buy. But they have um, kind of, they have a yeah. full range of Cuban gangster shoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some, um, yeah, there's a lot of really decorative shoes at the moment that are shiny and plasticky and I just find them repulsive. Um, yeah, it's, it's that fashion thing again. But, it give, but what I really like about it, it gives you a, um, an alternative to the kind of main street, off, street offering that yeah. we've got. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for showing me your wardrobe. It My is pleasure. beautiful. And I love the consideration you give to fabrics and, and to design. I mean, you always look amazing. You're looking very relaxed for you today, but you always look so amazingly tuned out. Like Mike walks in the room and I always go, oh, what's he wearing? <laughs> thank you. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy that appreciation and it's... Um, Something I don't think we celebrate enough in this country is that um, whatever gender, it's that, wow, you know, that effort, that style, that when you came in, you looked at the artwork, it's like, well, let's wear the artwork when we go out. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the Italians embody that really, really well, don't they? I think there's some, um, luckily we're seeing a movement in a few retailers, so I'm thinking uh, working style, mandatory, um, so there's a few local retailers that are manufacturing now so that they can control that, they can do a small run, they can bring in a fabric that only seven people will ever touch, let alone wear. Mm. Um, so for me I'm excited looking more at New Zealand clothing and going, how can I support the industry here? I, I've got a, I'm happy with the ward, base wardrobe, so now I can go, okay, next shirt will be tailored at working style or uh, mandatory or whoever it is so that I can start going, we're bringing work into New Zealand, we're supporting that industry in a sensible way mm. rather than just mass produced. I bought a shirt off off the rack at Mandatory and um, for my husband and he's had broken collarbones from rugby, he's had um, multiple heart surgeries so he's not your standard form and the sizing was a bit in between and so we went back into Mandatory and she took a look excuse me, <coughs> and she just said we need a shirt made for you and so she took the same fabric and, and for the price that we bought it off the rack, she tailored it, made it from scratch, tailored it, and it looks so good on him. And you, and I think we've just got into this mindset that anything that come off comes off the rack should look good on us. And then when it doesn't, we think there's something wrong with us. But then you see something tailored for your body, and it is completely different. And she does an incredible job. It just looks so amazing once it had been cut to his his particular body shape yeah 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 and i'm I, i'm looking forward to that leveling up if you like that next that's my next journey and more decoration as i said before so Ooh, more decoration pocket like squares that. and ties and yeah yeah nice thank you mike time for a martini yeah i think we might move to the wine after the first martini <laughs>